The player pressure fader is, in my book, uh, a very delicate one. It has a lot of consequences if you use it wrongly. So it's quite important to really focus on how you want to use it. And the worst reason to use this fader is because it's cool. In one end, we have hardcore play pressure, and in the other end, we have pretense. And I'll explain the words. Hardcore is a little bit unfortunate to use. It explains exactly what this is, but in our, at least in Europe, there's a sort of a idea that hardcore is really cool. So people who skateboard are hardcore, and people who parkour, they do hardcore stuff, and so on. Um, it's a very beautiful tool to use, but again, as I said, it has grave consequences if used incorrectly. In the other end, we have pretense, that is when you pretend to do something instead of actually doing it. So, hardcore is uncomfortable and can be intense, and pretense is safe and playful. And if you do something, if you pretend something, that will impact your character only, not the player. And hardcore impacts both the character and yourself as a player. So the question is, to what degree is the comfort of the players regulated? So we all have needs and wants as human beings. And you as a designer can go and m manipulate those needs and wants, remove some of them or enhance some of them. And that has, of course, consequences. And this brings to this wonderful guy, Abraham Maslow, who did his hierarchy of needs. These are the needs we as human beings want. And at the bottom, there's the most basic needs, which is, for example, breathing, pretty basic, food, sleep, and so on. Uh, as we move up, we go to stuff like security of the body. Do I feel safe all the time? We go to is my family safe? Is my friend safe? And if we move up again, it's about do I have any friends? Do I have any family that I can relate to? Again, on top of that, there's self-esteem, confidence and so on. So mainly when we do stuff in labs that is on the hardcore end of the scale is that when we, we push the boundaries of the lower part and of course also a very a tool that has been used a lot, or a theme that has been used a lot, is bullying, which is up here in the esteem part of it. But if you mess with the bottom part of it, everything can go and be very messy. So if people do not get any sleep or food, they are cold, and you hold their breath for them, it becomes very messy very fast. So. It takes a lot of energy and devotion, both from the players, but also from the designers and organizers, if you want to go into this and dabble with these and change these things and, and provoke it, then you have to be extremely focused and it will take a lot of time. And trust me, all of these have been tested and tried out. There's been games with real physical violence, there's been games with real sex, there's been games with real torture. So just because it sounds cool to say let's go into the forest and we don't gonna, we're not going to give the players any food and it's going to be cold and we know it's going to be minus degrees, mm, it has been tried. Ask us, ask anybody in the lab community and maybe they know somebody who has already tried this and you can learn from those experiences. So if you want to do something that is very hardcore, ask around. Somebody has probably done it before and have a lot of experience about it and can tell you what worked and didn't work. 
So the things that we can manipulate, as I said, is like food, it's shelter, sleep, hygiene, violence, torture, drugs, alcohol, sex, exhaustion, and religious routines like meditation, trance, and so on. So if you push people through these a lot, then it will have very strong uh, impact on your players. And this ties in very nicely to the openness fader. If you use these, if you push your players' needs for these, but do not tell them that you're going to do it, it's going to go completely and utterly and horribly wrong. If people do not, if people cannot give informed consent, then you as a designer has failed. And I have been to labs where I thought I had informed consent, that I said, I want to do this, because everybody around me also gave their consent. And that is not me giving consent, that's me giving into or believing that I can do this. And we as human beings are not really good at m sort of evaluating our own position in life and where we, how much we can take. We don't know it until we have tried, and when we realize we don't uh, can take, we can't take it. Our boundaries have been crossed by ourselves, and we are in a bad position. So it is up to you as a designer to take care of your players, even though they say this is what I want. Because most probably some of the things they do not want, even though they say it. Does that make sense? Cool. So when we lab, we need to feel safe and playful. And one of the ways to do that is if we take some of these things that we want people to experience, uh, but we exchange it for something else. So we use something, uh, we use rep representation. We take one thing to represent another thing. So for example, uh, instead of using real alcohol, you can use juice that is spiced up with say Tabasco or, or hot sauce. Um, if you want to do a game about alcoholism, it's probably not a good idea to use real alcohol, but because then the game will be about being drunk and not about alcoholism as a concept. Or if you use a foam sword instead of steel swords, that will of course also change the game pretty drastically, but it will change it to be more playful. You can experience fighting way easier than using real steel swords, which of course is dangerous. Um, and there's a couple of other examples. So if we move the fader to max hardcore, we are in a situation where it is very plausible. So if you, for example, play Capo that we saw yesterday, uh, it was quite high on the hardcore part of the fader. The organizers and designers wanted people to experience how it is to be in actually actual very uncomfortable space uh, being almost tortured for real. And that creates a very plausible reaction from your players. If they are blindfolded, their hearing is impaired, their hands are tied around their back and then they are hosed down with cold water. Yes? Plausible means that it is, it is very close to what it is in real life. So it, does, it is not pretend, it is the opposite. So it's, more, it's, it's a good chance that it will be like the real world. It's not something that we're playing, but it's very close to the real world. It will make the lab more serious. So if you have steel swords in your medieval fantasy game, if somebody pulls out a live sharp sword, everybody will take that sword extremely serious because it can chop off arms and legs if you use it incorrectly. This of course also adds commitment. You are very committed to be in the, the sort of scene you're in or in, in the moment if somebody's waving around a real gun. Then your focus will be on that gun, it will not be anywhere else. And this, of course, can create very strong emotions. 
um, anything that is dangerous will create strong emotions. It will activate your flight, fight or flight part of the brain and you will get adrenaline in your body and you will be pumped up and it will create strong emotions. Of course, it can ask, add risk. If somebody is waving a sharp sword around, somebody probably will get cut, which is not good. It can distract from role playing. If you fear for your life, you will not role play. You will fear for your life. And again, it can create strong emotions that can be really bad. If, for example, you make a horror game where people get extremely afraid, they will knock people in the faces and they'll jump through windows that are not open to get away. This will happen. So you have to be very careful about how much pressure do you put on your players because they will default to the very human reaction of running away and they'll do it no matter what. And it's not for everyone. It's, uh, again, all the things on the plus side that it can be more serious and create strong emotions, that is not for everyone. And it requires a lot of commitment. So if you do not want to have that experience, then uh, a lot of players would say they don't want to participate in that. I did not participate in Capo, for example, because after I heard a lot about it, I thought this game is not for me. So I missed out on a great game, but I did it because I didn't feel that it was an experience that I wanted to dive into. And that does not make Capo a bad game. It's just make it a game not for me. On the pretense side of things, it, if you use representations, for example, you use the foam swords instead of the steel swords. It creates alibi to fight. So suddenly, because I don't know, I know that I will not get hurt fighting with the rubber swords or the foam swords, I will probably engage more in fighting. And it adds a playability, it will be fun to do. It's, I think it's Probably, if you're not really, really trained, then it's not fun to, to fight with steel swords, because it's very dangerous, but to fight with fo foam swords, that is extremely fun, at least to me. Um, power is distributed differently if you use pretense. That means if we play a LARP where we, where, if we play a fight club LARP where we fight with our fists, then the chance in that lab, if we played hardcore, that I will win against most of you is pretty high. <laughs> but if we use a representation of fighting, let's say rock, paper, scissors, for example, then we have an equal chance of winning. And that will change the power distribution in the room. So we will suddenly, I will lose my advantage of being big and you will gain some advantage for not being as big as me. Does that make sense? Cool. Representation and game mechanics can be fun. Just by adding game mechanics or, or using a representation of something dangerous can add a lot of fun to it because it's fun to play around. It's fun to use game mechanics. So it's a great positive thing to do. And consequences can be ignored, and that is also on both sliders. So, for example, if we play, again, a fight club game where we hit each other in the face a lot, it's very positive that on Monday morning I can go back to work without a broken nose. Very positive. Um, on the negative side is that I will shrug off the fight I just had with Mass, for example, and then I can do another fight right away. So the consequences within the lab is less when, it's, when you use pretense than if you use it in the real world. We all know that movie fighting, they can keep on fighting, but if anyone <laughs> has been in a real fight or seen a real fight, when you hit in the face, you, you stop because it hurts really bad. So there's plus or minus for it. When you use pretense, you represent something with something else. It, it takes focus 
away from something else. So if you if you use a, a game mechanic or representation to to not use the real thing, then it becomes about that thing because you have to use time explaining the the game mechanic or the representation, how it works, how is the how does the fighting system work if you have a sword, how many times can I hit you before you die, that will then suddenly your lab will be about that. If you use the real thing, then it's not necessarily about that because you have not singled that thing out. Does that make sense? Cool. So when you use hardcore, or you use pretense, be very aware that it is serious business. And be aware that even though you get this cool idea and it sounds like, oh, I'm gonna pressure my players this much and it's gonna be very intense. And that it, this is a shortcut to intense emotions and intense scenes. This is a very in that way, it's a very easy tool to use, but it is also a very dangerous tool to use. So be, be very aware of the consequences of choosing to move the slider to the hardcore end. I have used it a lot, uh, but it takes a lot of concentration and you, you need to ask your players a lot of questions and get good answers back and you ask a lot of experienced designers what will happen if I do this and do this and do this. And I have asked so many questions about this. I find it a very interesting slider, but I also know that it can be very, uh, that can be grave consequences if you use it wrongly. Thank you. <laughs>